Coming for you. Damage. Okay, nice. Repair. I'm ready. Let's engage. There you are. <laughs> nice. Oh my god. It just gets shredded. I'm on you. I'm on you. You're a gunner. Oh my god, I attacked you from behind. This one is mine. Let's go. <laughs> Hello everybody. So if you follow my VR channel, you know that I love a flight simulation game. Whether they are <clears throat> something chill or something more combat related. So today I decided to play Squadron 1 Deathmatch and uh, basically this game has a multiplayer deathmatch, you can practice against AI, there's basic training that get you into the game, there are missions and kind of a chill mode, and basically different game modes that you're gonna find the one that you enjoy best. So just switch here and there just to kind of mix and match and have fun with different game modes. So this is the training, what you see here, basically I'm in the ship, of course again this is a VR game, if you just fall into this video, a virtual reality game, I'm playing this on the Quest 2. And just so you know, this is an Apple version, so this is not the final of the game. You can see it as an early access game. So you can see you can choose different controls, arcade, flight controls, uh, or manual controls. So I went with the, you know, the flight controls. I personally like it like that. The controls are very simple. Just use the controller. You can use the left thumbstick if you press it. Uh, you can boost. Uh, if you move it uh, again up and down, left and right, you can just control the orientation of the spaceship and you can use the trigger to shoot whether it's just, uh, you know, your main weapon or you can shoot uh, missiles after you're locking on an enemy. And you get uh, missiles, but basically this is uh, something at the core of the game. You're going to see upgrades kind of spread out, popping here and there uh, in different locations on the map. And you need to pass through those gates in order to get them. This can be HP, this can be shield, it can be weapon upgrade, and it can be also missiles, uh, which you need to obtain before you can be able to lock on enemies and destroy them with the missiles. So when you jump into a deathmatch, uh, you can see uh, the score at the bottom of the spaceship, your position. Uh, you can see the health on the left side uh, and your boost and uh, the number of uh, missiles on the right side in red and you can see there's also a timer for this mode and yeah basically uh, as you can see i'm just uh, maneuvering shooting and trying to get into those gate to get upgrades every now and then where is it oh, yeah. oh, got a Never mind, baby. Shield defeated. No. Alright, tail. Oh. Ooh. Come on, get him. One thing I have to say that I really didn't like the shooting sound effects. It felt really cheap, toyish. I don't know. I just didn't like it. So again, this is a 6 degree of freedom uh, gameplay, so again, the, yeah, it's really cool that the upgrades actually don't align with just where you actually, uh, you know, face, uh, spaceship is facing. You need to actually align yourself there and pass through it. Uh, so this means sometimes you need to maneuver around, slow down, and make sure you're kind of adjusting yourself directly into the gates. It's very important to get them, because sometimes you are low, you need to get them, you know, you can see the green, this is uh, healing. Uh, you have the red ones, which is, uh, you can see an icon of a uh, missile, which is, which is uh, this one loads your missiles and uh, you also have upgrades i think the purple one are upgrades for your weapons so again if i compile everything together it's not as exciting as i hoped for although it designed well uh, in terms of the whole of the space speed feels good movement feels good uh, i personally really wanted more um be able to get boost m most of the time so i can just move fast rather than feel just just slowly rotating around and you felt that the boost is kind of more useful if enemies are targeting you and want to lock a missile you then you're just going to use the boost in order to evade it so it felt in that aspect that i really wanted faster movement uh, and uh, again the boost is limited you need if you want to get by the way more boost you need to find a gate that has boost in order to enjoy it even then it's kind of very um, limited uh, in how much you can actually use it all right, let's watch some more gameplay. This is versus AI, the wave mode. All right, where are they? Four of them. <laughs> Here we go. Shred! Shred them! Oh my god, I missed all of them. I think we're gonna get an upgrade or something. Uh, yeah, upgrade. Weapons upgraded. Nice. It's different colors. <laughs> yeah, of 
quest. It should be better damage, hopefully. Oh, attacking from behind, huh? Sneaky. I'm coming for you. Damage. Nice. Here. I'm ready. Let's engage. There you are. <laughs> nice. Oh my god, we just switched to Reddit. I'm on you. I'm on you. You're a gunner. Oh my god, they're attacking from behind. This one is mine. Let's go. <laughs> uh, one thing to note regarding aiming. Now, basically, again, it's not about gazing here, but when you're actually looking at with your headset, when you rotate the headset, not with your eyeballs, uh, it's gonna s just use put the crosser in that location. Now I have a mixed feeling about that. Basically, it's kind of intersect together, interfere uh, many times, because sometimes you just want to you know focus on a specific thing, and you don't want the you know be especially when you are fighting, and you don't want this to actually also co also control the crosser. Sometimes it works well, sometimes it doesn't. I do prefer that than the very unsensitive controls uh, of the quest in order to control. Also, although there are ways to, to kind of adjust it, of course, in game using the software to play with it. Uh, basically, this is my preferred method, but it's not perfect. So basically, again, uh, when maybe we're gonna have, for example, the ability to detect the eyes with the gaze and the ability to also focus on certain thing, maybe uh, you know this will work better. But right now, I have a mixed feeling about that. It's far from being perfect, and it interferes with the gameplay uh, because you just lose focus and you see things a bit blurry while you're trying to actually uh, put the cursor on a specific target. And of course, you're gonna lose sometimes the the focus on the target itself, on the cursor, because things look a bit blurry because you're trying to look at the area where you actually want to focus on the enemy and not on the cursor where you want to put the cursor. Anyway, it's problematic. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. It's not the best, uh, you know, the best way to implement it, but it works okay. Yes, overall my impressions. Well, this is kind of a. Uh, let's say like a mid-range experience. I mean, it feels good when it comes to, uh, you know, uh, uh, maneuvering the ship and shooting. I like the mechanics where you get the upgrades. Uh, it works good when it comes to aiming. Uh, it's not perfect, but again, uh, in this type of game, uh, it actually works well. But again, as I told you, the limit, there is a limitation with sometimes it just uh, throws you out of focus when you want to focus on both the enemy where they are located and both put the crosshair together. It's just intersecting, not in a good way. Uh, regarding immersion, good, but far from being perfect. I really like, by the way, the little particle effects that actually put there, they give, give better sense of uh, uh, movement and depth. Uh, rather, if it's just an empty space with era, you know, uh, some of the asteroids here and there, they put some particle effect that you can see. Uh, of course, there, there are no stars, just particles, the small that flies towards you that give you more sense of uh, uh, speed and movement and acceleration. So this is a really nice touch. Uh, and I really felt that it's actually, uh, you know, the, the thought actually putting it there actually made it uh, just uh, feel more uh, fun and immersive to fly. But even then, I think that the lack of uh, high brightness also kind of diminished. This is something related to the hardware for the Quest 2. It kind of diminished the effect. Uh, uh, realism and stuff and hopefully if i hope that the quest 3 will be uh, improved upon that uh, this is important to have kind of a high brightness scenes you know to have very uh, you know high contrast you really can immerse yourself in such a scene but again this is not the problem with the software just the problem the limitation of the hardware and there are different options to unlock ships uh, with uh, credits that you get. For example, when I played the, uh, the multiplayer, I got 50 credits. Uh, when I, uh, I think I got the most skills and won. Uh, so you can unlock new stuff. And uh, yeah, so overall, uh, the direction is good. There are ways to improve it. And again, as I mentioned, this is still app life. So the developer can still make improvement before the final release of the game. And uh, yeah, overall, the direction is good. It's not that I fell out of my seat, but it's a very good game. And I do recommend playing it overall. So yeah, it's available via SideQuest, so make sure to check it out again. Uh, you can download via the Oculus Store, and, but at least it's on SideQuest, so make sure to check it out. Definitely recommend it, hopefully for more improvements, but definitely this uh, going in the right direction. Thanks for watching, everybody. I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.